In the PCA algorithm, we take n-dimensional features and reduce them to some k-dimensional feature representation. This number k is a parameter of the PCA algorithm. This number k is also called the number of principal components, or the number of principal components that we retain. And in this video, I'd like to give you some guidelines to sort of tell you about how people tend to think about how to choose this parameter k for PCA. In order to choose k, that is, to choose the number of principal components, here are a couple useful concepts. What PCA tries to do is it tries to mi minimize the average square projection error. So it tries to minimize this quantity, which I'm writing down, which is uh, the difference between the original data x and the projected version x approx i, which was defined in the last video. So it tries to minimize the square distance between x and its projection onto that lower dimensional surface. So that's the average square projection error. Also, let me define the total variation in the data to be the average length squared of these uh, examples xi. So the total variation in the data is you know, the average of my training set of the length of each of my training examples. And this sort of says, on average, how far are my training examples from the vector, from, from just being all zero? So the, how far is, uh, my, how far on average are my training examples from the origin? When we're trying to choose k, pretty common rule of thumb for choosing k is to choose the smallest value so that the ratio between these is less than 0.01. So in other words, uh, pretty common way to think about how to choose k is we want the average square projection error, that is the um, average uh, the distance between x and its projections, divided by you know the total variation of the data, that is how much the data varies. We want this ratio to be less than, let's say, 0.01, or to be um, less than 1%, would be, which is another way of thinking about it. And the way most people think about choosing k is, rather than choosing k directly, the way uh, most people talk about it is as what this number is, whether this is 0.01 or some other number. And if this is 0.01, another way to say this, to use the language of PCA, is that 99% of the variance is retained. Um, I don't really want to, you know, don't, don't worry about what this phrase really means technically, but uh, this phrase 99% of the variance retained just means that this quantity on the left is less than 0.01. And so if you um, are using PCA and if you want to tell someone, you know, how many uh, principal components you retained, it'd be more common to say, well, I chose K so that 99% of the variance was retained. And that's kind of a useful thing to, to, to know. It means that, you know, the average square projection error divided by the total variation, that was at most 1%. That's kind of an insightful thing to think about. Whereas if you tell someone that, uh, well, I, retain, I, I had uh, 100 principal components or K was equal to 100 in a thousand dimensional data, it's sort of harder for people to interpret that. So this number 0.01 is, uh, you know, what people often use. Um, other common values will be 0.05, and so this will be 5%. And if you do that, then you go and say, well, 95% of the variance was retained. And, uh, you know, other numbers, uh, maybe, um, in maybe around 90% of the variance was retained, maybe as low as 85%. So 90% would correspond to saying this to 0.10, and so kind of parens 10%. And so a range of values from you know, 90, 95, 99, maybe as low as 85% of the variance retained would be a fairly typical range of values. And maybe a 95 to 99 um, is really the most common range of values that people use. And uh, for many data sets, you'd be surprised, in order to retain 99% of the variance, you can often reduce the dimension of the data significantly still and still retain most of the variance because for most real life data sets, many features are just highly correlated and so it turns out to be possible to compress the data a lot and still retain, you know, 99% of the variance or 95% of the variance. So how do you implement this? Well, here's one algorithm that you might use. We might start off, uh, if you want to choose the value of k, we might start off with k equals 1. And then we run through PCA, you know, so we compute u reduce, compute z1, z2, up to zm, compute all those uh, x1 approx and so on, up to xm approx, and then we check if 99% of the variance is retained. Then we're good and we use k equals 1, but if it isn't, then what we'll do is we'll next try k equals 2. 
and then we'll again run through this entire procedure and check, you know, is this expression satisfied? Is this less than 0.01? And if it's not, then we do this again. Let's try k equals 3, then try k equals 4, and so on, until maybe we get up to k equals 17, and we find that 99% of the variance is obtained, and then we'll use k equals 17, right? So that's one way to choose uh, the uh, choose the value of choose the smallest value of k so that 99% of the variance is retained. But as you can imagine, this, this procedure seems horribly inefficient. We're trying k equals 1, k equals 2, we're doing all these calculations. Fortunately, when you implement a PCA, it actually, in this inner step, it actually gives us a quantity that makes it much easier to compute these things as well. Specifically, when you're calling SVD to get these matrices U, S, and V, when you're calling SVD on the covariance matrix sigma, it also gives us back this matrix S. And what S is, is going to be a square matrix, and uh, n by n matrix, in fact, that is diagonal. So it's diagonal entries S11, S22, S33, down to S, N, N, are going to be the only non-zero elements of this matrix, and everything off the diagonals is going to be zero. Okay, so those big O's that I'm drawing, by that what I mean is that, you know, everything off the diagonal of this matrix, all of those entries there, are going to be zeros. And so, what is possible to show, and I won't, I won't prove this here, but it turns out that for a given value of k, this quantity over here, can be computed much more simply. And that quantity can be computed as 1 minus sum from i equals 1 to k of SII divided by sum from i equals 1 through n of SII. So just to say that in words, or just to take another view of how to explain that, if k equals 3, let's say, what we're going to do to compute the numerator is sum from 1, i equals 1 through 3 of SII, so we just compute the sum of these first three elements, so that's the numerator. And then for the denominator, well, that's the sum of all of these diagonal entries. And 1 minus the ratio of that, that gives me this quantity over here that I've uh, circled in blue. And so what we can do is just test if this is less than or equal to 0.01, or equivalently, we can test if you know, sum from i equals 1 through k, SII divided by sum from i equals 1 through n, SII, if this is greater than or equal to 0.99, if you want to make sure that 99% of the variance is retained. And so what you can do is just um, slowly increase k, you know, set k equals 1, set k equals 2, set k equals 3, and so on, and just test this quantity to see uh, what is the smallest value of k that ensures that 99% of the variance is retained. And if you do this, then you need to call the SVD function only once because that gives you the S matrix, and once you have the S matrix, you can then yeah, just keep on doing this calculation by increasing the value of K in the numerator, and so you don't need to keep on calling SVD over and over again to test out different values of K. So this procedure is much more efficient, and uh, this can allow you to select the value of K without needing to run PCA from scratch over and over. You just run SVD once, this gives you all of these diagonal numbers, all of these numbers, S11, S22, down to SNN, and then you can just, you know, vary K in this expression uh, to find the smallest value of K so that 99% of the variance is retained. So to summarize, the way that uh, I often use the way that I often choose k when I'm using PCA for compression is I would call SVD once on the covariance matrix, and then I would use this formula and pick the value of smallest value of k for which this expression is satisfied. And by the way, even if you were to pick some different value of k, even if you were to pick the value of k manually, you know, maybe I have a thousand dimensional data and uh, I just want to choose k equals 100, then if you want to explain to others what you just did, a good way to explain the performance of your implementation of PCA to them is actually to take this quantity and compute what this is, and that will tell you what was the percentage of variance retained. And if you report that number, then you know people that are familiar with PCA or people will, will, can use this to try to get a good understanding of how well your 100-dimensional representation is approximating your original data set. Because it's 99% of variance retained, that's really a measure of um, your square reconstruction error, you know, that ratio of being at most 0.01, and just gives people a 
good intuitive sense of whether your implementation of PCA is finding a good approximation of your original data set. So hopefully that gives you an efficient procedure for choosing the number k, for choosing what dimension to reduce your data to. And if you apply PCA to very high dimensional data sets, you know, to like a thousand dimensional data, very often just because data sets tend to have highly correlated features, this is just a property of most of the data sets you see, uh, you often find that PCA will be able to retain 99% of the variance, or retain 95, 99, some high fraction of the variance, even while compressing the data by, by a very large factor.